most of the students think the relationship between student and a teacher is just a class. So why don't we dig a little bit deeper and know what's inside the story of the lecturer's day? So why not? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Today we have Dr. Christine, one of the best lecturers in Sahar University. First of all, Dr. Christine, how are you? I'm good. Please introduce Dr. Christine. All right. So as you know, I'm Dr. Christine and I'm the program coordinator of English language education. I'm teaching different levels from level one to master's program. So uh, I got like a vast uh, teaching experience. I've been teaching for more than 10 years or almost 20 years if we're going to be counting each year. And uh, for me, I've been to different universities already. I've worked with different people, with different students. So I've been in this institution for a very long time already. So I believe probably sooner or later I have to resign or retire and pass on the skills that I have. And of course, as a teacher, I have to pass on to the next generation. And then uh, let's see what's going to happen next. Well, we actually hope you continue. So, uh, Dr. Christine, as you said that you have been to many universities, can you just count the universities and colleges you have been lecturing? Okay, I think I've been to four or five universities already. Oh, wow. And of course, now I'm with Sohar University. Okay, so let's focus on Sohar University. How is your day as a lecturer? How it starts? How you make your day as a lecturer? All right, uh, as a lecturer, of course, the first thing that we have to do in the morning, check our emails, <laughs> the concerns of the students. We have to make sure that all of our materials for the teaching are ready. And we have to make sure that we are all prepared. And aside from that, we also have some administrative work. So we have to deal with those things as well. So all in all, I think eight hours will not be enough. We just, you know, doing all of these things. So expect like if you're going to be a teacher, one of these nights or one of the nights you have to bring some work at home. So, but it's fine because again, it's part of the job. Dr. Christine, as the starting, okay? Like when you start your day, what is the boost you take to face on the students at the university? All right, so every morning as a teacher, you have to tell yourself that you are ready to face the students. You have to be prepared, not just physically, but also mentally. You know, anything can happen inside the classroom. And of course, it's not all the time that you are in a good mood. Yeah, so you just have to make sure that you are going to have the patience, you have the determination to teach the students. Uh, well, we are human beings, so of course. of course there are times that, you know, we are also affected by different factors. So with that, we just have to check ourselves before coming to our classes. Okay, Dr. Christine, you mentioned that you have to be prepared mentally. Mm -hmm. How do you do that? All right, so how do I prepare myself mentally? Well, of course, I have to talk to myself, wow. okay? Like, they have to make sure that, check yourself, like, okay, what's my mood today? How will I deliver my class? You, you already know your students. How are you going to deal with them? Exactly. All right. So you will encounter several things inside the classroom. But then again, you have to also ask yourself, how will I handle these situations or these things? Okay. And... We are human beings, just like what I've said. Sometimes we get emotional. Sometimes there are factors that might affect our teaching. But then when you're inside the classroom, whatever happens, the show must go on. Okay. So, Miss Christine, a little bit a nice, funny, personal question. Mm -hmm. If 
you were not uh, a lecturer that you are today. Mm -hmm. What was your plan to become? I think I want to be a business person. Okay. So I know like some students in my class, they know that my degree is not just education. Yeah. So I got a background in business, business. Uh, majoring in entrepreneurship. I love entrepreneurship. So I think I will be an entrepreneur. Yeah. A woman of prestige. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. I really like it. Yes, because see, if you're going to be an entrepreneur, you are also changing the society or some lives of the people. You know, you're helping the community. That's why you are entrepreneurship. Nice. I am an, an entrepreneur. So as an entrepreneur, I guess your advice is going to be so useful for other people. So the question is, if a student wants to follow your footsteps, what are the advices you want to give him? Or like example, this is the mistake that you have done in your past and you don't want him to do it. Advice, not my mistake, but if someone wants to be a lecturer, who wants to be in academia, there are so many things that I want to tell that person. Okay, number one is be a teacher who has principles, meaning you uphold the values and ethics. It's, you know, your job. It's your responsibility to mold the future generation. I mean... Of course, you only have few students probably in your classes, but we, you should not play with their lives. So, I mean, do your job. Be a responsible teacher, okay? Do what is proper. Be ethical, yeah? And you should, up, again, you should uphold the values and what are these, okay? We keep on telling students, you know, like they have to have discipline, they have to have values. So the values could be honesty. So as a teacher, you have to be honest. How do you expect your students to be honest as well? Yeah, if you're not an honest teacher. You have, let's say for example, you have to have time management. If you want your students to have time management, so you as a teacher, okay, you have to have time management. And all of these things. So a teacher is, in a way, a model to the students. So we have to be very careful in what we do, with what we say, because, you know, these students, they look up on us. So again, uh, being a teacher is not easy. So that's one thing that I have to advise. Totally agree. So, yes, you have to be prepared. Is this really what you want? Are you passionate enough to teach students? You know, inside a classroom, let's say you have 20, 30, 40, 50 students. Imagine how many personalities you're dealing with. And <laughs> of course, aside from that, probably you will have advice and different problems may come up, all right? So you have to be with them. You have to deal with these things. And you have to always make sure that these students, you know, will go to the right path. <laughs> and I think that's a very big responsibility. Totally agree. Yes. And um, I think those things are the things that, you know, the future lecturer uh, has to keep in mind. Okay. The students look up to the teacher yeah. if they want to follow their footsteps. That's a nice quote and I'm going to steal it, to be honest. Okay. <laughs> but the question about students. Mm -hmm. Have you ever failed a student? Of course. <laughs> But I did not fail. The student, this is what I always say. Did students fail in my class? Yes. I did not fail the students. They failed themselves. Okay. Why? <laughs> Why? That's Why? Even Why? me. All right. Um, I don't want to see students failing in my class. Oh, no. Because I'm part of it. You know, I, I'm part of the students' failure. You don't want to see the same face again. It's not that. Of course, I don't want to see their faces again. 
<laughs> because I want them to go to the next level, right? <laughs> it will not be good for them. But uh, aside from that, well, uh, I did not fail students. This is I. This is one thing that I always tell them: you fail yourself. I have my rubrics. I have my marking scheme. I have my criteria. When you perform well in my class, then you will pass. Because you, as a student, you will feel it. Did I do well in my class or no? Okay? Whatever mark you're getting from me, it's an earned mark. I did not give it because I want to pass you. It's not even uh, up to me, right, to decide. It's up to you. Yeah. It's, it's, it's up to you. Just give me the requirements, um, do the standards, yeah, and we're all good. But uh, there are some cases like, you know, a student, like, you know, he studies hard and he attends his classes, but he still fails. Yes. And on the other hand, there is a student who is so careless, always sleeping, and he manages to pass this class. All right. So what's, what's that situation? <laughs> okay. It, probably. Okay. It has something to do with the ability of the student. There are some students who are a little bit lazy, but they have, let's say, the ability. All right. They may not like to go to the class, but they know the lesson because probably they do self-study. Mm. There are students who really study very hard and I pity these students because, you know, they would study for hours. But yeah. then again, they said, okay, they still fail. Now, here's one thing that we have to also remember. It has something to do with the learning gap. Learning gap. How wide is the learning gap? Right. Yeah. If a student fails, even though he studied very hard, then my next question will be, did you do your best? Of course, a student would say, yes, yes, I did my best. Now, did you improve? No. Yes. OK, probably he started at the bottom. He may not have reached the no. standard, but this, if the student improve, and that's good enough, try again. It's okay to fail. Try again. Probably next time you will get, or he will get the, the standards. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So we have to also tell students failing is okay. Being, you know, a failure is okay. But you have to learn from it. In this life, we fail. And that's fine. It's not, you know, it's not that like we have to be perfect all the time or we have to pass all the time. No, it's fine to fail. For me, those people who fail and were able to, who failed and were able to stand up, that's a, you know, a, a thing. They're very courageous. And again, just like what I've said, this is life. Yeah, right. it's a cycle. This is life. We fail, we win, and we, we have die. to deal. Yes, we deal with it. Yeah, <laughs> nice. But we have to learn from it. We have to, of course. Yes. Like it's not just a oh, it happened. Last, let's forget it. And yes, and see those people who failed and they they failed and they stood up. So meaning, they're very persistent. Yes, uh, persistent. Persistence is something that students should have. Aside from persistence, they have to have the grit. Grit, mm. meaning they don't surrender. Yeah. yeah. Because it will reflect on their life later on. What, if you're going to face problems, you probably failed on something, what, you will just give up? No. You fight for it. have to keep yes. on trying. Keep on trying, fight for it. Okay, so just... Let's take this an example you mm -hmm. faced and like, a, let's not say a failure, mm -hmm. but an average or above average student. Uh -huh. How Miss Christine is going to make him a brilliant student? Okay. Because as a teacher, you have to teach them. So Yes, but what's that? I cannot make someone brilliant. Um, okay. I can, yes. I can share what I know, but at the end of the day, it has something to do with the student. Right? I can guide the student. I can mentor the student to make that student better. But then the student has to also do his 
part. Part, yeah. yeah? So even though, like, you mentor the student, but if the student does not do his part, then, okay, probably the improvement will not be that great. So again, it takes two to tango. It's not just about the teacher. It's not just about the student. So they have to work together. And I believe, like, for me personally, I want to work with students. I like to work with students. They just have to show me the determination, the perseverance, you know? If the student is really willing to learn, that will be great. Because for me as a teacher, if the student is willing to learn, then I can guide you, I can mentor you, I can give you an advice on how to be better in what, you, in what the student's doing. So again, it takes two. Not two, just a yes. Two sides. Two, yes. Balance. Balance. And it's not just about, you know, even though the teacher is probably really good. Let's say, for example, we even if we're going to call Krashen and Chomsky <laughs> here. Yes. It's too well. Yes. But then again, if the student doesn't want to work, then it's... everything will be useless. Yeah. Okay. So um, I take it to tango. Nice. Nice tail polish, by the way. <laughs> so let's take like the education to the future. Mm -hmm. uh, as your point of view, as your review, like, you know, do you think the education system is going to be the same within 10 or 20 years or it's going to, you know, change? And the change, is it going to be in a good way or it's going to be in a bad way? All right. So when it comes to education, probably 10, 20 years from now, it will be quite different. Now we're starting to do online. Yeah. Probably 10, 20 years ago, online, it was not quite honored in academia. But now universities abroad, everywhere, actually, they are offering online courses. Yeah. Okay. Students become more independent. So probably in 10, 20 years from now, it will be somewhat different. I still believe there will be classrooms, okay? Because not all students are that independent as well. And of course, there are advantages. Uh, we still want to have this face-to-face -face communication. It's, it's different when you're able to talk to your teacher, to your classmates, do collaborative work face-to-face compared to, let's say, online, yeah? yeah? So it could be blended, it could be mixed, or probably it depends on the students. There might be courses that can be offered blended or online or in the classroom. So I think in 10, 20 years from now, students have the options now. They may have, yes, so options. In like future, they're going to have option yes. what they want. Yes. And of course, it will go back to what type of students are we having? Yes. Exactly. So we have different types of students. There are students who cannot sit inside a classroom. They want to study on their own. So probably they will opt for online. I'm one of them. Yes. <laughs> I cannot so, sit at classroom. So yes. So again, the students may have uh, options in 10, 20 years. Like we cannot just force them to sit in the, inside a classroom. It depends, it depends on the students. Again, in this way, we are tackling the different types of learners. Yeah. Yeah, as an, as an educated, mm -hmm. education students, you know already we have different types of learners, different intelligences yeah. and stuff like that. So I think mm. it will be better. You think there are going to be robots? Robots. Okay, instead of, of course. teachers. Ah, instead of teachers, I don't think robots can really replace teachers. That's yes. the question. Yeah, uh, they they can help. They can help the teachers, but really replacing them, I don't think so. Why? Because the teacher is not just about the knowledge. No, you know, yeah. teacher does not just give the knowledge. There's, of course, emotions. Of course, of course. There are emotions yeah. involved in teaching, yeah? Yeah. And there has to be human interaction. A student may not like to, you know, communicate with a robot. <laughs> yes, there's no connection there. 
in the side of the classroom, again, you are an education student. There has to be a connection between yeah. the teacher and the, the student. Students. Yeah. If we got a teacher who is a robot, then there will be no connection be at all. Between. Yes. So a robot will never understand what the student is feeling. So yeah. that probably will not happen, but a robot can be a helper, a helper. an assistant. A teaching assistant, probably. But a teacher, no. No, no. <laughs> Dr. Christine, mm -hmm. the last question. Okay. The end of this interview. You, as a Soha University lecturer, mm -hmm. the moment you leave Soha University, what will be the m most thing that you're going to miss? Like the most important thing you miss? Okay, so for me, I think I will miss the students. Really? Yes, I will miss the students. See here, my students are different from my students, you know, from my previous university. So I've learned a lot from them. They tested my patience. <laughs> totally agree. <laughs> yes, but you know, there's always a good thing. And there, you have to look at the bright side. And even me, probably I cannot see it right now probably I cannot really appreciate appreciate things fully right now. But if I'm going to leave Suhar University in a few years' time, inshallah, Allah. <laughs> of course, I'm, I'm going to miss uh, everyone here. I'm going to miss the students. You know, the students here are also different. They are, they are a handful. But I've learned a lot of things from the, these students. I learned culture because of them. I learned... Uh, how to be, I, and just like what I've said, how to be more patient, you know? I mean, it also challenged my creativity, my teaching strategies, my, my approach in the class. So, yes, I've learned and I'm learning a lot. So you're going to miss us? Of course I'm going to miss you. You're going to miss me. I miss my students, especially when, you know, when they graduate. And I'm going to be very, very happy to see them one day, you know, doing the job that they want to do. I mean, be a mover in this society. That's how, we sh uh, how they should be. That's why we educate students, because we want them to, in a way, contribute to this society. So looking back in this past few years, and, and you know, I saw some students, they're already teaching, they're doing you know, the job that they love to do. It makes me happy as a teacher. And imagine in a few years time, yeah, how many students graduated already and, and stuff like that. So at least you will say, okay, you're part of this. Yeah. yeah, you have done your part. Yes. You have done an achievement. Yeah. Nice. Well, that's and so, all, I guess. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much for having this nice talk. Yes, and, and thank you for inviting me. I hope you enjoyed. Yes, I, I enjoy talking to my students, <laughs> as you know. <laughs> so at least now we are having this podcast and... My office is always open for my students. I, and I think you know already that every time you come to my office, there are so many students, you know, hanging yeah. around. So yes, I love talking to students. It makes me know them well. Okay, thank you.